my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups and we're on episode 85. I couldn't remember then, I had to quickly glance down. But yes, episode 85. I've got lots of things that I want to share with you. I have been very busy this week sewing. I've been doing a little bit of crochet as well, so I will share my um, sort of progress with that and what I've been challenging myself to learn to do as well. So before I dive into all of the things that I want to share with you today, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. And I'm wearing a dress, I think I made this for my summer holidays last year. Um, and it's a deer and don't know, actually, I think I made this for the year before. And I've already talked, um, I think I talked about this last weekend. Um, I tend to sew one Maya Sota's dress every summer for my summer holidays. So yeah, this was from a couple of years ago. got this fabric from Semi Sunshine. Um, I love all the colours. I love how bright and fun it is and it's floral. And I love the Maya Sota's because of that mandarin collar and ever so slightly subtle sort of v-neck opening and then the buttons down here. Um, short sleeves. I didn't have enough of this fabric from memory to do the ruffles on the sleeve, but I did put the ruffle on the hem of the skirt. And what I meant to say when I shared my myosotis um, last weekend, what I tend to do is I sew the longer skirt version and then I add the ruffle. And um, because what they suggest in the instructions is you do a shorter skirt and then add the ruffle. But I like the length of the skirt with the longer length skirt and then the ruffle. Um, so I'll stand up so you can see. I've got. Um, I think these were Pigeon Wishes um, buttons, you probably can't really see them. Um, and then, yeah, it's just really lovely, loose and floaty. This was a viscose. Um, did I put pockets in? No, I didn't have enough fabric for pockets. Um, and then, yeah, that's the ruffle on the hem. If I've got pictures of me wearing this dress, I'll put it in now. I should have pictures of me wearing this dress. I've got some lightning bolt earrings from Sapphire Frills. I've got so many of her earrings, they're absolutely gorgeous. And then I've got tie knot headband in. I will link the tutorial that I follow for the tie knot headband. It's a free tutorial by Juliet Uzor. So I'll link it down below. Um, there's a link to her website, but also a video tutorial on YouTube as well. So I'll link that down below because I keep getting asked about the tie knot headbands. I absolutely love wearing them, particularly when my hair is slightly longer. Um, and when it's warm as well, it keeps my hair off my face. So I'm really kind of embracing wearing headbands. And that was all because of Me Made May. I wanted to start accessorizing my outfits a little bit more. So now I always wear a pair of earrings and I've always got a tie knot headband on. Um, so that is what I'm wearing. So before I dive into all the things I want to share with you today, I have got my notebook in front of me, so I will be looking down at various points. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Sarah Slater 1340 um, for letting me know that Edgewater Avenue have got a YouTube channel and on their YouTube they've got tutorials for all their different patterns that they do. Um, I didn't realise that they had video tutorials. Last weekend I talked about um, the difficulties I faced sewing up their patterns. I just found their written instructions not very clear and I got myself in a bit of a muddle. Um, but there's video tutorials which I wasn't aware of. So thank you very much for making me aware of that. I will have a look at the video tutorials and that might be enough to encourage me to revisit their patterns. Um, I'm gonna take the two swimming costumes on holiday with me. So I will report back how I find wearing them on holiday as well. Um, but yeah, thank you to everybody that got in touch to let me know that Edgewater Avenue have got a YouTube channel. I have definitely um, sort of discovered, I kind of knew this about me, but I'm definitely more of a visual learner. I need to see either images, but really clear images, or a video to go alongside what I'm reading. Um, I have a tendency to kind of skim over instructions when they're written down um, and don't take all of that information in for, you know, that's just how my brain works. Um, so I do find it more beneficial having really clear photos and also videos to go alongside that if it's something that's a little bit tricky. Um, so it's really useful that they have got some video tutorials on their YouTube and I'll link that down below for anyone else that might be interested as well. So thank you so much for that. It's one of the reasons why I absolutely love doing these videos and talking about my experiences because then I get other people that give me like top tips and things. So I really do appreciate it. So I usually like to start with what I've been busy sewing this week, but one of the things that I've been sewing, I've used um, some fabric that arrived this week. So I'm gonna reverse the order of my video and I'm gonna talk about fabrics first and then I'll talk about what I've been busy sewing. And I have been sewing for the summer holiday that I've got. Um, so I have been sewing a lot more than usual and I've had a couple of days, of full days of sewing, which has been glorious. 
Um, so it is a lot more than I would usually get um, kind of sewn up in a week. And I, it is the summer holidays at the moment. I am a teacher, my husband's also a teacher. Um, so he's around when I'm sort of having my sewing days um, to be there for our children as well. Um, and I've mentioned lots and lots of times before, um, but it really is about sort of downtime and really enjoying our own hobbies. And we've all got our own little hobbies that we're all quite happy participating in um, with each other. So quite often what's happened this week is I'll be sewing at my sewing space and then Lola will be doing diamond painting um, in the same room as me and we'll usually have a book on to listen to or we'll have the radio on so she's got company and I've got company and then um, my husband and Rubes will be doing something in the same room as well. So we've always got each other's company, but we're all quite happy doing our own little hobbies too, as well as spending time together. Um, so fabrics first. Um, so I've mentioned this fabric company before. They're a new fabric company. They're called Transform Fabrics and they've got some really gorgeous fabrics on their website. And I think they've got patterns on there too from memory. Um, I have chosen some absolutely gorgeous fabric. They had a discount code um, I don't know if it's still going on, but they had a discount code. I think it was a birthday celebration. So I was able to use a discount code to get, I think it was 30% off. And I um, chose some really gorgeous rayon fabric. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so Christine has packed this up and sent it to me very quickly. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I think it arrived within a couple of days. Um, and this is the gorgeous fabric. It's really lovely and floaty. And I know that if my husband gets hold of this, he would definitely want this for a shirt for next summer, already thinking ahead to next summer. Um, but yeah, this is the fabric, absolutely gorgeous, really lightweight because it's a rayon, really love that floral print and that dark green background. You can see how floaty this fabric is, it's absolutely beautiful. I think I've got two and a half meters. Um, I have no plans for it at the moment, but because they had a, um, they had a birthday discount code, I thought it's the perfect opportunity to buy some fabric. Um, absolutely stunning. So I'll link their website down below if you haven't discovered them yet, but I absolutely love that fabric, it's beautiful. So thank you, Christine, for sending that so quickly. And then the lovely Brogan, who is at Crafty Pie, has started selling um, dresses that she is sewing up, so custom designed dresses. She's also started selling um, kits so that you can make patchwork bags. And then she's also started selling some fabrics and there was a gorgeous um, rainbow checker. Um, it was a double gauze fabric. And if you followed me for a while, you'll know that I'm not a massive fan of double gauze. But actually loads of people have said with the right garment and um, it can be brilliant to wear. I'm not a massive fan of double gauze because I found it quite a bouncy fabric to work with. I found that it kind of stretches quite easily and I find it can sometimes be quite a bulky fabric to work with, but so many sunshine had shared this fabric in their stories um, probably about a week or two ago and it sold out so quickly I wasn't able to get any and then Brogan shared that she was possibly going to be getting some and selling it in her shop um, and as soon as the fabrics went live in her shop I bought I think I got three meters of this fabric. I must have got three meters because I've already sewn it up into something which I'll be sharing um, but this is the gorgeous fabric. You can see that I've only got an off cut left of it. It's absolutely beautiful. So it's a white double gauze, but then it's got this rainbow kind of check effect. It's absolutely stunning. And they're like pastel colors. I just think they're beautiful. And actually it's not too bouncy for a double gauze. Um, so as soon as I saw it, I ordered three meters. It arrived really quickly and um, postage was very speedy. Got a lovely little card from Brogan that said, thank you for the order. And I've already turned it into something that I'm gonna take on holiday with us. So I will share that in a second. Um, but yeah, Brogan started selling fabrics and lots of other things in her shop as well. So I'll link that down below if you haven't discovered her yet. She's also got an Instagram page for her shop I think she's got an Instagram page for her shop. I'm sure she has. And I'll link that down below for you as well. She's also got a YouTube channel, but I'm sure you follow her YouTube channel already. And if you don't, I will make sure that I link that down below for you as well. But yeah, I couldn't resist that fabric. It was a fabric that I was really sad that I'd missed out on. Um, and I think she's got this on pre-order at the moment. It's a really lovely, soft double gauze. So this fabric has definitely converted me um, to sewing with double gauze. Um, so that was all the fabric that I wanted to share with you today. I have also got a pattern that I wanted to talk about and then I'll go on to what I've been sewing because I've already used this pattern as well. 
So it's a pattern that I've seen loads of people absolutely fall in love with and sew lots of. Tamlin from Sewn on the Tyne um, has sewn quite a few of these as well. It's a pattern by Tammy Handmade and it's the Naya t-shirt and I was a little bit unsure as to whether I needed another t-shirt pattern in my life but actually it's a really lovely relaxed fit and this t-shirt has been absolutely perfect for Ruby and that's what I've used the pattern for to sew a couple of t-shirts for them to take on holiday. Um, I've taught before, Ruby is autistic, has quite a lot of sensory sensitivities around like clothing and things, fabrics have to feel right on their skin, um, they, they like wearing quite loose fitting garments as well. So this t-shirt has been absolutely perfect for sewing a couple of t-shirts for our holiday. So it's um, called the Naya t-shirt, as you can see it's quite a relaxed fit t-shirt. It says the Naya t-shirt is a stylish pattern that features dropped built-in sleeves that finish with a cuff detail. The slip-on and boxy fit makes the perfect cosy t-shirt for sewists looking for a quick yet satisfying make. You'll su be surprised how quickly it comes together and will want to make one in every colour and it really does come together really quickly. Less than half an hour to cut this out and get it sewn up and I sewed two at the same time. So these are the line drawings. You can extend it, and I did choose to extend it by about three inches because Ruby wanted it slightly longer, um, but that's what it looks like. Um, the neckline at the front and the back is exactly the same, and it's finished with a little neckband, as you can see. And then you've got these little cuffs on the um, sleeves as well, and it's a grown on sleeve. So it makes it super speedy because there's no inserting of sleeves either, which is great. And it comes in sizes 6 to 32, which is great. Um, you get included lots of inspiration from the pattern testers. Um, and yeah, I've really, really enjoyed sewing it up. In terms of fabric recommendations, it says this t-shirt style slips over your head and has a comfy and loose fitting silhouette. Light to medium weight knit fabrics like a viscose jersey, cotton jersey, lightweight knit wool blends will work best. Using fabric with a bit of drape will help create a more fluid and relaxed t-shirt that glides over the body. So I've used a cotton jersey. I think they're both, I'm a viscose jersey. I, th I was going to say I think they're both cotton jerseys. I'll show you in a second. Maybe one of them was a viscose jersey actually. Um, but yeah, it's a really great pattern. I'm definitely going to sew a few for myself as well. And there's something that I've been busy sewing up this week, which I think the Naya t-shirt would go perfectly with. Um, so I would definitely recommend the t-shirt pattern. It's a PDF only pattern. I'll link it down below. Um, but great instructions and great construction as well. A really, really satisfying sew. So on to what I've been busy sewing and also busy crocheting. So there's been quite a theme for the last couple of weeks and I'm really sorry that I keep mentioning going on holiday, I'm very excited. Um, but that has been the theme for all of my sewing. And last weekend I talked about having quite ambitious plans of various things that I wanted to get sewn up. The main things I wanted to get sewn up were new swimwear sets for myself and also Ruby and Lola. Uh, there was a couple of dresses that I wanted to get sewn up and I am filming this video a couple of days before we go away and I've got one sewing plan that I'm really hoping I get some time to get this sewn up so I can take it on holiday with me and um, I'll talk about that at the end. So I'll start with the first dress that I have sewn up and I shared this beautiful fabric um, that came in the Hey Sir Sister Summer Project um, kind of box. And it came with the Stylark Norman jumpsuit pattern. But I knew that I didn't want to use that pattern with this fabric. It's an absolutely gorgeous um, cotton poplin. It's so beautiful. I love how vibrant and bright those colours are. And I talked about using it for the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress. And that is exactly what I've done. Um, but I've hacked it ever so slightly. Um, and the, it's a really straightforward hack, but I've just done a tiered gathered skirt rather than a straight, um, just rectangular kind of gathered skirt. So I've sewn it up um, as per the instructions and I couldn't get the idea of using this fabric for a Mabel dress out of my head once I'd seen um, Georgie use this fabric to sew up the Mabel. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that is what the neckline looks like. It's slightly squared neckline. I did do ever so slightly larger um, ties for the front for a little bit more of a bow. I've got the shearing on the sleeves. So I've got the shearing on the sleeves there. It creates this gorgeous little frill, which is beautiful. And you've got the elastic on the front there, which creates this gorgeous little ruffle as well. You've got elastic in the sleeve heads and you've got elastic in the back as well, which kind of just 
fits the dress to your body. It's absolutely beautiful. And then at the top of the skirt, um, you've got the shearing as well, um, which was really fun to do. I absolutely love putting shearing in. Um, I have found the best way to insert shearing is to hand wind the bobbin with the shearing elastic. Make sure that you've got a new needle in your machine and then put the longest stitch length that you can on your machine. And I've found that that makes the shearing go in absolutely no bother at all. Um, when I get back from my holiday, I have got plans to sew up and um, film a tutorial on how to do the Mabel Sophia mashup that I did where I used the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress pattern um, and I sewed it up identical on the front um, with that gathered skirt but then I hacked the back to have a tie and the elastic in the skirt so it was more open at the back. So I am going to film a video tutorial and within that I will talk about my approach to um, putting in shearing elastic as well for anyone that needs support with that. Um, I haven't got pictures of me wearing any of these makes, um, so I have to share pictures um, once I get back from my holiday. The weather's not been great, so I've not really been able to get outside and get photos. Um, but this is what the skirt looks like. Hopefully you can see it's just a gathered, tiered skirt. So that's the first tier, and then you've got the second tier, and then the third tier. So it's an ever so slightly, well it is quite a longer skirt, it's more like a uh what do they call it like a, a midi length dress it goes sort of mid calf in terms of the length of the skirt and i really love the shape of that skirt with the tears as well um so this is going to come on holiday with me and i'll definitely get photos i'll probably share i think i'll probably share on instagram in the story some outfits um when we get dressed up to go out for dinner in the evenings um so i'll definitely share pictures of all of these makes on instagram if you don't follow me already I'm the baker that sews on Instagram. So I'll be sharing lots of pictures of so That's the first thing that I've got sewn up. And I just think that fabric is perfect for that pattern. And then the next two things I've got sewn up, I've used the same pattern. And it's a pattern that I used um, last week. I shared in last Sunday's um, sewing catch up. And it's the Chalk and Notch Marcel dress, which I've had in my stash since last summer, because this came in the Hey Sister Summer Project box. And I sewed it up using the red and white striped linen fabric. Absolutely love it. And I'm going to bring this on holiday. And um, I just, as soon as I'd finished sewing that version up, um, the fabric that came in the Sir Hilly Jane box last month, so I think it was Ju July box, I was going to say June box, I think it was the July box um, where Hayley collaborated with Tilly and the Buttons. I wasn't sure what to use that fabric for, but as soon as I'd finished the first version, I just thought that fabric would be absolutely perfect for the chalk and notch Marcel dress. This comes in sizes zero to 30 and I've sewn up view A with that gorgeous gathered um, sort of tears on the front and the back. Absolutely gorgeous, love this pattern. Um, so here it is, it's gonna be a bit tricky to show you uh, because the fabric is so busy. And I think this fabric just works perfectly for that pattern. So you've got that narrow sort of bodice front and narrow bodice back. You've got the straps. I have found with the straps, I've had to take about two centimetres off because they're just slightly too long on me. Um, and then that's what the skirt looks like. You can't see at all because the fabric is so busy, but it has got the panel going down the front and then you've got the tears on the side. It's so busy. Um, again, I will get pictures of me wearing this um, and share them on Instagram, but I absolutely love the shape of this dress. And I think this viscose twill works absolutely perfectly for that pattern. It's got such a gorgeous amount of movement. And I think this is just gonna be so floaty and dreamy to wear. And um, so I'm really excited about taking that on holiday. And I'm really pleased that I have found a gorgeous pattern for this beautiful fabric. So I really wasn't sure what to use this beautiful fabric for. Um, and it's so stunning. I didn't want it to be left in my stash for too long. So very excited about that one. And then I loved that version so much that when I saw that Crafty Pie had the double gauze fabric in stock, I just instantly could imagine that fabric working really well as the Marcel dress as well. So that's exactly what I've done. And I think this is probably my favourite one. It's absolutely beautiful. And I think this is just going to feel so lovely and light to wear um, when hopefully it's lovely and sunny and warm. So here it is. You might be able to see the tears a bit better on this fabric. 
Um, but yeah, it's just really beautiful. It's a really gorgeous construction. Absolutely love it. So yeah, that's the gathered tears all the way down the side. And it's the same on the other side. And this double gauze just works so nicely for this fabric. It's just absolutely beautiful. It feels really lovely and light. I just think it's going to be stunning to wear as well. Um, yeah, really enjoyable to sew. Great construction, fantastic instructions. And actually most of the construction goes into the tears and the gathering. Um, and I actually quite like gathering. I find it quite a relaxing thing to do. Um, and I feel like I've got the gathering quite even on all the different tiers. It's going to be tricky to show you. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy gathering. I do find it quite a relaxing thing to do. So I'm really looking forward to wearing all of my Marcel dresses on holiday. I think they're going to be brilliant dresses to wear. Um, and that fabric is just absolutely beautiful. I think it screams summertime. So really enjoyed sewing those dresses. Um, oh, the t-shirts, that's the next thing that I wanted to share with you. So the Naya t-shirt pattern by Tammy Handmade. Um, like I said, Ruby wanted a couple of boxy, oversized, kind of loose fitting t-shirts. So I had this fabric, I can't remember where I got it from. It was called Neapolitan Ice Cream, I think it was called. So I'll look back through my emails and see if I can remember where I got it from. And if I can, I'll link it down below. Um, but yeah, this is the fabric. Again, I think it screams summer. So yeah, this is the first one. I'll stand up so you can see. It needs a press. Um, but yeah, front and back. Um, I did try really hard on my pattern matching uh, down the sides. And then we've got the cuffs as well. So I've gone for a yellow cuff on one side and a green cuff on the other side. And then on the t-shirts, I've put some labels. So the first one says, you're doing great, which I think is really cute. And then the other t-shirt is using, it was a viscose, I think, a viscose jersey. This was from Rainbow Fabrics. And I'd shared this fabric. Did I share it last weekend or maybe a few weekends ago? Uh, it's got bananas all over it. It's a really, really fun fabric. Really lovely and soft and really lightweight which is really important for rubes and then on this one I have put a little label that says love you to the moon and back and it's quite subtle you can't really see the label um on the t-shirt and this is what they're going to travel in as well um just with a pair of leggings so nice and comfortable which is really important so yeah two really straightforward t-shirts it's definitely going to be my go-to t-shirt pattern came together really quickly as well really easy to sew up um yeah and i'm really pleased that i've got a couple of t-shirts for boobs to take away with us as well so what else have i been sewing swimwear so i talked last weekend about sewing up the Helen's Closet Sandpiper Swimsuit, one for Rubes and one for Lola, and I have got those sewn up. So, let's start with Lola's. I talked about this amazing, um, what was it called? Was it mermaid print fabric that I got from Like So Amazing? Absolutely incredible, look at that fabric. So I was very careful with um, cutting it out so that I could make sure that I got kind of that, um, what do you call it, like ombre effect of the green going into the blue. Um, and it's the same on the back and you can see with the hem band as well. So really straightforward pattern, really, really enjoyable to sew. Um, absolutely fantastic swimwear set. Um, brilliant for beginners as well. If it's your first foray into sewing swimwear, I would highly recommend the Sandpiper swim set from Helen's Closet. Absolutely fantastic instructions and it comes together really nicely. So that's the top. And then we've just gone for um, high-waisted bottoms. So when they wear them, they end up looking like they're wearing like a swimming costume. There's really great coverage, which is fantastic. What they tend to do is when the sun is quite warm um, and they're in the pool, they'll put their swimsuits on and then pop t-shirts on over the top just so we can make sure that they're definitely covered. Um, and that's what the bottoms look like. So that's for Lola. And then, I did choose a fabric for Ruby that was floral with mint green and lilac. And I don't know what I did wrong. Um, I measured Rubes and I cut out their size, sewed it up, could not get it past, I think like mid thigh. I don't think I had the fabric laying correctly when I cut it so that where I needed more of the stretch to be, I think it was on the wrong part of the garment. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically when they were trying to put on the pants 
the um, stretch part of the fabric was going lengthways rather than widthways. So I think I had totally messed up when I was cutting it out. But anyway, I've got a whole stash of swimwear fabric. So Rubes was able to choose a different fabric and they chose this really lovely, fun, fruity, sort of navy fabric. And it's got bananas, strawberries, cherries, and lemons all over. Um, again, same as Lola, so it's got that deep hem. And then the pants are high-waisted. So essentially, it's like wearing a swimsuit, a full swimsuit, but you're not having to completely strip when you need to go to the loo. Um, really great coverage as well with that pattern. Really comfortable as well. Um, what I've done for both Ruby and Lola, I've used the same fabric for the lining and I've got them to try it on once I've constructed it before you insert the swimmer elastic. Um, they're both quite sensitive in terms of what fabrics feel like on their skin. So both of their versions, I didn't put swimwear elastic in. It was enough to have the outer and the inner fabric providing that support for them. So I have still turned it over and top stitched along like the leg openings and the same with like the armholes and the neck band but I just didn't put swimwear elastic in they both felt like they had enough support with the swimwear um, and it felt comfortable as well which is really important so that was for both of them and then I talked last weekend about hoping to get a bit of time to sew up the sew over at Zara swimsuit pattern and I'm really pleased that I did manage to get two sewn up for myself so I'm really looking forward to wearing both of these and the first one I used the same fabric that's going to match Lola so this amazing um, ombre kind of mermaidy fabric from like so amazing so those are the pants um, they're quite high waisted you can put on a band and put elastic in but I chose not to put on the band but I have put swimwear elastic um, in the top of the, trou the trousers, in the top of the swimwear bottoms. And the same with the legs, they've got swimwear elastic there for a little bit of support. And I've just used the same fabric for the lining. I didn't have enough fabric to be able to cut it on the fold, so I just cut it as two separate pieces and then there's just a line going down there, um, which I thought gave quite a cool kind of look on the inside because I've got that green and then that blue. And it's the same on the other side too. So I'm really looking forward to wearing those. And then the top to go with it was a really enjoyable sew, actually. I would definitely recommend this as a swimwear pattern. That's what the top looks like. And the band, you put elastic in the band and it just provides a little bit of extra support. And then you've got this like really lovely keyhole opening. And um, it's a really great swimwear pattern. I've tried it on and it fits me really nicely. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm really excited about wearing um, the Zara bikini in that fabric. And then I had some fabric from Semi Sunshine, I think it was. It was like a swirly, I think it was called Unicorn Swirl or something when I bought it. And I've used that fabric to sew up the Zara swimsuit as well. But what I decided to do with the bottoms was I've made them more low rise. So they could finish more towards my belly button, but I've made them finish more sort of a good, I'd probably say an inch and a half underneath where my belly button is. So they're a bit more low rise um so not quite covering all of my tummy that fabric is so cool absolutely love it i think it's really really fun and then the top is sewn exactly the same as the other one really really interesting construction um and i think this looks just so fun i think it's a really gorgeous fabric it's going to make for a really fun bikini so it's the same keyhole opening there and then you've got the ties the way that you construct it's really interesting um, so it is fully lined and then before you tie it the bikini front is like open you need to tie the two kind of front ties together to create that sort of knot detail and I've done that I tied it when I had it on so I could make sure that I had enough support around the bust area but I've tried it on and I've done a little bit of like walking around at home with it on and it feels like it's really really supportive and um, so I've really enjoyed sewing with that as well so I would highly recommend the Zara swimwear um, pattern and that comes in not only do you get a bikini but you also get a swimsuit option for that one I'm sure you get yeah you do get a swimsuit option for that one as well and then also with the bikini you can have the option that I've gone for where you just sew the shoulder seams or you can have the option where you've got like the sliders so you can adjust the straps I've just gone for the um 
the one where you sew the shoulder seams and I just basted it in place, tried it on and checked that that length was fine for me and it fits me really nicely as well. I sewed up a 10 for the bottoms and a 10 for the top, which was my measurements and it fits me really nicely. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see myself using this pattern more in the future. And I would, if I had more time, I would have sewn up the swimsuit as well. Um, but maybe next summer I can sew up the swimsuit for my next holiday. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about wearing those when we go away. Um, I think that was, oh no, I was going to say that was everything, but there's one more thing that I have been busy sewing up and I talked about trying to get round to doing this um, this week so that I could wear it as my airport outfit and it's using the Stylark um, jumpsuit pattern that came in the Hazel Sister summer project box and it's the Norman jumpsuit. I think it's such a beautiful jumpsuit and I said that I had some sort of duck egg blue viscose linen that came in a Sew Heady Jane box and I was going to use that to sew up the jumpsuit. It's a really interesting construction, came together really nicely actually, a um, couple of hours it took to sew up. Um, I was worried about it perhaps being a little bit sort of too loose fitting and too oversized. I didn't want it to come across as being quite baggy and not really having any shape on me. But actually you've got this sort of elastic detail in the back and it really does provide a little bit of shaping. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out actually. Really interesting um, construction where you attach these little straps. So you attach it to the front and then you attach the facing and then you fold the facing as you stitch it to the armhole and that creates these really lovely little straps and then you sandwich those straps between the back pattern piece and the back facing stitch the facing and then you pull it through and you've got these really gorgeous um sort of little straps they're really beautiful this is the fabric that i was going to use oh, one minute so this is the fabric I wanted to use, and you can see that I have used it. It's a duck egg blue viscose linen that came in a So Heavy Jane box. And it was one of those fabrics that arrived, and I absolutely loved the colour, but I didn't know what to do with it. So it sat in my stash for a while, and I'm really pleased that I didn't just jump in and turn it into something just for the sake of it, because I feel like this is the perfect project for it. I do still need to press them, you can see. Um, I need to give them a really good press. Um, but yeah, they're quite wide-legged, so I think they're going to be super comfortable. I was worried about how low the crotch is, but actually they fit really nicely. Um, they have got inseam pockets, which I think is perfect. This really lovely like V neckline at the front and a V neckline at the back. And then you can see you've got elastic, which is stitched on the inside and it creates this gathering and that does provide a little bit of shaping to the jumpsuit. Again, I haven't got pictures of me wearing this. Um, I've been a bit rubbish this week at getting photos. I just haven't had the opportunity. And like I said, the weather's been really rubbish this week. So I haven't been able to get any photos. Um, but I will get pictures of me wearing all of these garments and I'll share them on Instagram. And when I'm back and I do like a, um, I tend to do a video of all the things that I made for the holiday and I'll put pictures in of us wearing all of these different things too. But yeah, I'm really pleased that I got that sewn up. I think that's gonna be super comfortable for traveling in. And then I've got a t-shirt um, that I sewed ages ago. It's just a plain, well, it's not plain actually. It's a t-shirt, I think it's the Tilling the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt. And it's got um, sun parasols, sun loungers, cocktails and things. And it's like the perfect going on holiday t-shirt. So I'm going to put that on underneath the jumpsuit. So I'm very excited about that. So that's all of the things that I've been sewing. Um, so lots and lots of things, but very much everything with holiday in mind. And then I have been doing some more crochet. So I've been continuing with the granny square that I've been talking about. So just doing an extra kind of row um, I'll say each week, it's not each week, but just whenever I get the chance, I've just been adding. So I think I've got maybe two more rows to do until that's the perfect size for the back of a denim jacket. And then I mentioned last weekend that I was umming and ahhing about whether I would have the skills yet to start crocheting a vest pattern. And I'd found a vest pattern and I inserted a picture of it last weekend. I'll put it in now. Um, but then I went down a rabbit hole of crochet on Instagram and found lots of various different accounts. Um, I did lots of reading of reviews over on Etsy and Google and just looking on Instagram at um, people's confidence levels in terms of tackling patterns and things. And there was one company that kept on coming up as being really brilliant at supporting people that were just starting out with crochet, really helping to unpick kind of the language and the terminology and their patterns were 
um, they looked really interesting. And there was one pattern in particular, which was a vest pattern um, that I was really kind of just fell in love with. So I went on Etsy and I bought their pattern and I have been starting to have a go at um, crocheting it up. So I have got the pattern here. What did I do with it? So this is the pattern. My instructions are a little bit battered because I've been taking crochet out and about with me. So when we've been going to like Kew Gardens or my husband and I went to the Royal Academy in the week to look at the summer exhibition, I took the crochet with me on the tube and I felt a little bit silly at first, but actually once I got into it, it was a really lovely way of whiling away the time on the tube. Um, and it's this pattern and it's by Realm Patterns, I think they're called, no, Realm Designs. And it's the Granny Stripe Vest and I just fell in love with this. I mean, this is lovely and bright and rainbowy and colourful. Um, it's described as a medium pattern, but when I read the reviews, there were lots of people that would describe themselves as a beginner crocheter. Um, and they'd tackled this and they found it really straight. So I took the plunge and I bought the pattern, printed it out. And what I really love about this pattern is there are lots of fantastic images to really help you understand what you're doing as you go along. So I'm right at the start of the pattern at the moment. I have done this part and I have done this part. They say here that if you want the vest to be a little bit longer, just do an, a few extra rows. So that's what I'm currently doing at the moment. And then the next section will be starting at row 19, um, working the um, sort of figuring out the front. Um, and it looks like I'll be doing kind of this section and then going into the arm as well. So I think that's gonna be quite complicated, but there are really clear pictures to kind of support me along the way as well. So. I'll let you know how I get on with it, but here it is at the moment. And I think it's really, really fun. Um, so yeah, I've gone with kind of rainbowy colors. I've gone with gray, pink, lilac -y purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, although orange looks very similar to the red and red. And then I was trying to think about what color to do the ribbing at the bottom and the armholes and the neckline. And I've gone with a black, um, Lola suggested black would go nicely. So I have got some black. You can see that I'm still working this row at the top, um, but it's the granny stripe vest. I've really, really enjoyed um, sort of working on this. This is gonna come with me on holiday and hopefully I'll be able to finish crocheting it and I'll be able to show you when we get back. I'm also going to be taking the granny squares and the wool to do granny squares on holiday because I've got 45 granny squares to do for the cardigan pattern that I'm currently working on as well. And I'm really enjoying just being able to chill out, listen to a book and do lots and lots of crochet. So hopefully I'll have lots to update you on. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed this pattern so far. It's been really, really fun to work on. So I just thought I'd update you on how I'm getting on with crocheting. Um, so the next thing I wanted to let you know about, I'm sure you've seen this already on Instagram, but Mia, who is um, arty farty on Instagram, she was on the latest um, Sewing Bee series. Absolutely love her style. Her crochet um, sort of garments that she made on the show were absolutely incredible. If I can find an image, I'll put an image in now, but I just fell in love with everything that she made on the show and I really love her kind of style. And um, she's just launched a YouTube channel where she's going to be sharing like fabrics and patterns and tutorials, um, some top tips, um, tools, sew alongs, alterations, etc. So um, I'll link her channel down below in case you didn't see that she had started a YouTube channel. And um, I'm really excited to see what she gets up to and what things she shares over on her channel too. So that's Mia, who is, she's Mia's Arty Farty on YouTube. I'll link her Instagram, I'm sure you follow her already, and I'll also link her YouTube channel. But I instantly gave her a follow when she announced that she was starting a YouTube channel. It's very exciting. The next thing I wanted to share was two sewing challenges that are coming up um, over on Instagram. The first one is something that you can either sponsor um, the people that are taking part in it, or you can join in with the Sew Along as well. And it's the Sew Over It Big Sew Off 2023. They've run this for the last couple of years, I think. So it's a 24 hour sew-a-thon in aid of um, the charity Mind. 
um, running from the 4th of September to the 5th of September. It's 24 hours of constant sewing. There's lots of different people getting involved in it. Um, so you can either um, join in and sew something. They're going to be donating to Give Your Best charity or you can sponsor them. Um, I'll link down below their YouTube and their Instagram page so you can go and find out a little bit more about the um, Sew Over It Sew Along that's taking place. Um, but it sounds quite fun. Um, that's the start of the academic year for me, so I won't be taking part in the Sew Along because I won't have the time. I'll be busy thinking about the new children that are going to be joining. Um, but yeah, it sounded like something great to be involved in. And even if you can't take part in the Sew Along, you can sponsor them, um, which is a great way of raising money for the charity as well. And then the other challenge that has been um, announced over on Instagram is by Sew Over 50. They're hosting a mini challenge, which is to sew a hat. And um, there's a hashtag, sew a hat 23. It's running between August the 14th and the 31st of August. And we're being encouraged to sew a hat and um, use the hashtag, sew a hat 23. Or I think you can sew a hat or you can um, style a hat that you've already made and share photos. It needs your Instagram account needs to be a public account and you need to share it on your grid. And they're requesting that we don't use reels or stories to share if we are entering the competition. There's going to be some random prize winners and then the top 10 hats that are cho chosen that have caught the eyes of the Sew Over 50 editors will feature in a post on their page as well. I have just been sewing lots and lots of bucket hats. So I'm going to be sharing images of the bucket hats um, and taking part in that from August the 14th to August the 31st. Um, so yes, yeah, sew a hat or restyle a hat that you've already made. Doesn't have to be a summer hat, it can be a winter hat, it can be any hat. So use the hashtag um, sew a hat 23 and tag sew over 50. Make sure your account is public and share on your grid as well. So that sounded like a really fun thing to get involved in as well. And then the final thing I like to share is some of my sewing plans. So I've already talked about my crochet plans. I'm going to continue crocheting the vest and I'm also going to be crocheting granny squares. And then in terms of sewing, I have got this beautiful fabric that I got from um, Hey So Sister. It's a cotton lawn and I really wanted to turn it into something ahead of my summer holiday. Um, so I've cut out the Sew Over It Sophia dress. I've got a couple of days until we go away. Fingers crossed I get a chance to sew that up before we go away because I really would like to take that on holiday. I just think this fabric is perfect for a summer holiday dress. I've sewn up the Sophia dress before, so it's a pattern that I'm familiar with. But I just need a couple of hours um, so that I can get that sewn up. So we'll see if I get a chance. Otherwise, that can be something that I can get sewn up when I get back. And when I do get back, I'm going to um, film myself sewing the Mabel hack. And then I'm also going to be sewing the bowls bag for my father-in-law. And then hopefully with the leftover fabric, I can sew up a backpack for myself. So lots of plans as usual. Um, I am going away for a couple of weeks. So there won't be a Sunday sewing catch up, but I have got a couple of videos that I have filmed um, that are going to be coming out, hopefully if I can get them scheduled in time. Um, and I'll be posting those. So you've got a couple of videos of um, me talking about lots of different things. I've got a fabric and pattern haul. I've got a um, video where I'm talking about some fabrics that have been in my stash for a while and I'd like your suggestions. And if I get a chance, I'm really hoping to film a video of my five patterns that I want to sew for autumn. We'll see if I get the chance to film those. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed hearing what I've been getting up to, seeing all the things that I've been sewing and also crocheting. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really love it if you could hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.